Hello and happy, happy Tuesday. Super excited you guys are joining me today. My name is Wendy Lee and I am an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator and I'm really excited that you are joining me today. Um, let's see, I'm going to see if I can get this in the right place, share our video before we go too far so nobody misses it. Right? Hopefully. Wow. Well, this is the thing about Facebook that makes me a little bit crazy. Hey, Amelia, so glad you guys are jumping in. I am trying to make sure I'm in the right place and that my video is showing up and I am not seeing it. So, hmm. Ah, I think I got it, maybe. Hey Patty, so glad you're here today. All right, I think I got it and we will get started. Okay, good deal. So today I'm excited to share with you guys a little 3D uh, treat holder. So I posted this one, I think yesterday on my blog. I don't know if you saw it or not, but this was actually created by one of my team members for our recent team swap. And um, I was super excited about this. So I um, thought that I would go ahead and give this a try and show it to you guys today and uh, how to create it. But we're gonna do a Christmas version. So here's hers that she did for Halloween. Super cute, wishing you a happy Halloween. Love it, love it, love it. And then the one we are going to create today is using the Tag Buffet stamp set. And it's super cute. Fun, right? Okay, so let me go ahead and get started with this. Oh, I realized I don't have my light on. Let's see if we can add a little bit of light so you guys can see a little bit better. Hey, Jean. So glad you guys are joining me today. And we will move this stamp set out of the way. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So I'm gonna start with my, my base of my treat holder here, and this is a piece of real red cardstock that's two and three quarters by eight and one half inches, and I've scored it at four and a quarter just to make it easy to fold in half. And let's grab my little bone folder here. Oh good, you love this already, Jean? Yay, I love it too. All right, good. So this is gonna be the base, and I love that this is not only a treat holder, but it's got the little card element to it so you can write a little note. I think it's just a really nice giftable. So then I'm gonna create the hole in the top. So we're gonna bring in our detailed trio punch, and it's got three different edges on this punch. So you can corner round, you can put this little decorative image, and then you can also punch a hole. So I'm just gonna slide this all the way in, and then just lean on that punch and it's gonna punch this great hole. Now, I didn't get that very centered, but I'm not too worried about it because we're gonna make it fabulous either way. So I actually did punch through both layers. We'll tie the bow at the end, but I wanted to go ahead and put that hole in there so I didn't forget. Let's do the inside first, okay? So I'm gonna bring in a piece of Whisper White cardstock and this measures two and a half by three and a half. Of course, I will go back after the video and make sure that I add in all the dimensions and the supply list so you guys have everything you need to recreate this fabulous, fabulous project. All right, so we're bringing in Mossy Meadow and we're gonna use the Tis the Season sentiment from the Tag Buffet set and go ahead and stamp this down. Now, if you have any trouble with photopolymer and getting good stamped images, I don't find it so much on smaller images, but sometimes larger images, you do need to put a foam pad underneath. Um, I'm not having trouble with this particular stamp set. Maybe if we were doing this larger sentiment here, you might want the foam pad underneath, but just wanted to let you know. Um, oh yeah, you totally could put a gift card in this. Um, it, it's a great size for that. Let's see if I have a gift card on the table. I do, I have one, close by anyway. So yes, you could totally put a gift card in it. Um, you know, you could create this piece with a pocket and put a gift card. There's so many possibilities of things that you can do with this. I just love it. It's super cute, fast and easy to do. You can make all kinds of great gifts with this. So I'm gonna bring in, I'm gonna do the dots of the holly first. 
because I just feel like it. You could do the holly leaves first and then the dots, or berries, I guess they're actually berries. So stamp that down in real red. So I used real red ink for that one. Sorry, I didn't tell you first. And then I'm gonna use pear pizzazz to stamp my little holly leaves. Super cute, super cute, super cute. Fast and easy too, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and layer this. I'm gonna bring in a piece of Mossy Meadow cardstock, and this is two and five eighths by three and five eighths. And we'll bring in some adhesive. I, I'm grabbing the Seal Plus. This really doesn't need the Seal Plus for this. Um, but when you see the supply list, you're gonna see that's the only one I listed. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this. And, and I chose to use this because of the box on the front. So we don't really need it for these layers. It's a little excessively strong but it works great and you can use it and that's the whole point. So just to try to reduce from bringing in multiple adhesives. All right, so then let's go ahead and adhere this down on this lower section of the inside of the card base here. All right, so you can see this. This has all these little perforated pieces in it which makes it nice and easy to use tears off really easily or breaks off really easy when you're applying it. Hey Kay, so glad that you're here today. All right, so let's go ahead and decorate the front of our treat holder. So I am bringing in a piece of, another piece of Mossy Meadow, same size, two and five eighths by three and five eighths. And we're gonna layer on a piece of designer paper that is two and a half by three and a half. So it's the same size as these layers on the end side here. This designer paper is from the Heartwarming Hugs Designer Series Paper Pack, and it is full of fabulous, whoa, fabulous designs. And this is one of several of our papers that are currently on sale right now. So you can get it at 15% off, which is fabulous, 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 fabulous. I love designer paper. You might know this already about me. And so I buy stacks and stacks and stacks of it, but I use it. It's always so pretty and you look at it and you're like, oh, I don't want to cut it, but you have to cut it. You have to use it because it's beautiful. Okay, great. All right, let's create the box. So did I grab the trimmer? Of course, I don't have my paper trimmer in front of me. It's on the other side of the table. So I'm going to come over and get it and bring it over. I even made myself a note to don't forget to grab your paper trimmer. But I forgot to grab my paper trimmer. So we're gonna bring this in and hopefully, I'll double check and make sure I am in camera for this. I want to show you how to create this little pocket. Um, it's, it's kind of a little box uh, on the side that we're gonna slide the candy holder down in. So I've got a piece of real red cardstock. This is three and a half by two and a half. We're gonna score it. So let's move that cutting blade out of the way because I hate to accidentally cut that when I wanna score it. So let's see, I hope I'm up far enough. So I'm gonna score in at one, and, at one half, one, two and a half, and three. Or you could say a half inch and a one inch in from each side, but I'm gonna do it all at once here. So again, one half inch, and then I'll slide that over to the one inch mark and score that again. I like to go back and forth multiple times when I'm using the paper trimmer. Um, if you're using your Simply Scored, you get a little deeper impression here. Then I can slide it over to the two and a half inch mark, which you can see is also the one inch mark over here. And then I'm gonna slide it over to the three inch mark, which is also the half inch mark on that side. All right, so then we're gonna rotate this. And on the short side, I wanna score it at one half inch and one inch. There's a half and then one inch. Okay, so let's go ahead and move that trimmer out of our way. I'm gonna go ahead and fold this in hopes that you'll be able to see this a little bit better as we work through the snipping portions of this. Hopefully you can see it. So let's go ahead and I'm just running my bone folder as I'm folding each of these score lines. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do here is I want to go ahead and clip away the portions that I don't need to make this box. So this top score line here, I'm gonna go ahead and snip in. 
So I snipped in to that second score line there. Okay, I'm gonna repeat that on the other side. Okay, so see, I've got that. So I snipped in, so I've got two score lines. So it's that top one that I snipped in both sides, okay? Now, on these little tabs that are sticking out, I wanna go ahead and just cut off that outer section that's, that's sticking out, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and do that on both sides because I don't need those. All right, so my piece looks like this now. Following, I hope. All right, so next, I'm gonna go cut off this little square here. I'm not cutting very straight, but I think it's okay. I'm gonna come back in and I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. I'm gonna do some angle cuts too. All right, so this is my basic, um, and this is gonna fold in, right? This tab is gonna be what hooks the side together and then that's gonna fold in as well. So it's gonna create this little, this little box here. Let me fold that up, kind of dry fit that so you can see it, okay? And these back sides are gonna be what uh, adheres down. Okay, so I found when I'm doing things like this that I little, get a little bit of better results if I go ahead and angle off these little ends here. So let's go ahead and cut these, these ends a little bit. I'm gonna move that tab out of my way so I don't accidentally cut it. So this is just going to be so that when I fold it over, it doesn't accidentally um, stick out further than I want it to. So let's repeat on the other side. This is not a must do, but again, I found that it is very helpful to taper those corners. All right, let's go ahead and do this on the bottom one as well. Again, I'm gonna fold that tab in so that it is not in my way and I don't accidentally cut that off. All right, all my little clips. All right, I'm pretty happy with that. Now, you could do the same thing on this little tab if you want to. You could angle cut those as well. Uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and just leave it as is for this particular project. I don't know that it really matters one way or another. Okay, so now I need to apply adhesive to my three outer tabs as well as these two smaller tabs. So this is where tear and tape may have been a little... Whoa, okay, this is one, this is good that this happened. So this is one thing that sometimes will happen with tear and tape or with this uh, stamp and seal. It is so sticky that look, it removed the cardstock instead of applying the adhesive down on it. So I'm gonna try that again. The tabs might just be a little too small for me. Let's see if I can get this one. I got a little bit on that one. I don't need a lot. I just need a little. Nope, it's not gonna do it. It's gonna pull off that. So this is where you may have to move to um, tear and tape instead of the stamp and seal if it does pull that off. I got a smidge on there and I just need a small amount to hold it together. So I'm gonna leave that as is and I'm just gonna fold that corner in to create that side of that box. Hopefully this makes sense and you can see it all right. And I'm gonna do repeat on the other side. Okay, so that's my little box. Now, let's bring this in. I'm gonna fold these two sides in and fold that layer up to create my box. And so that's gonna kind of stick together, right? So I've got that on the back side. And then this is just gonna adhere right down on the front of my card here as that little pocket. So I'm looking at the three sides here, trying to even it left to right and then about the same distance up from the bottom. You place it where it makes you happy. It doesn't matter. And then I'm gonna slide my bone folder down in there and give that a good hard press to secure those sides in place. Great, cute, right? All right, not too bad, not too bad to put together. All right, so next, let's go ahead and continue our decoration. I've got a piece of Mossy Meadow, this was one and three quarters by two and a quarter, that I've die cut with these tasteful label dies. So I used this die here and cut that out. And this is gonna decorate my pocket, so we're just going to adhere it right onto that pocket there. Now, it would be really nice to apply the adhesive here so that I'm not too, um, I don't get too high up on it, but I think I'm gonna be fine. So let's just apply a little adhesive there and we'll put a second strip, but I wanna make sure I'm not going up too high because I don't wanna go higher than the pocket itself. All right, and I want this to come down and cover those little corners. 
Great. Now, if you'd like to, you could flip it over. It's hard for you guys to see, but I'm just going to rub that inside that pocket to give that a little pressure to um, secure that right on the front there. All right. Oh, Jean, yes, you just ordered the stamp set. Yeah, so this is the stamp set that I am featuring in my online bingo class. So um, we have a lot of fun. We do this via Zoom, if you've never joined us before. And it's uh, we do it for a couple hours is really what we do. And we play some bingo, and, and you guys earn some prizes. And then we make some projects. So we've got three make and takes that I've designed, and those get mailed to you ahead of time so that you can craft with me if you can. So And we are featuring the Tag Buffet stamp set. So you can choose to add that to your bingo registration. Or if you've got it, you can... Um, already have it, then you don't have to add it. Um, you can also use something else. I try to make the project so that you could use something else that you have. Okay, I've pulled in a scrap of Whisper White cardstock and I'm just inking up this stocking image in the Memento ink and I'm gonna stamp that down. Okay, and then we're gonna color this in. And do I have the blends on the table? Ha, huh. I forgot to grab those as well. Here, I think I have everything, and then I don't. Okay, they were on the other side of the table. I, I get a little confused sometimes. So I've got the dark and light real red blends, and I like to start with the dark, so let's go there first. And I'm finding I like this little bowl tip a little bit better than the brush tip, although I do use both, and I'll show that to you. So I'm going to add the dark real red. And I'm gonna go a little bit wider than I might want it because I'm I'm gonna overlap these colors. So the key that, that I am finding when using these blends is that you need to overlap and color over the top of the colors as you blend them so that it, it makes a really nice transition, right? So I'll show you that, I'll show you what I mean. So I'm just giving it a nice outline Let's color in a little bit deeper. And when you go over it multiple times, it gets a little bit darker. And I'm just kind of going over a little bit darker. Where Stampin' Up! has already added these dark lines for us, so I know that that's where my shadow should be or could be. All right, so here I'm gonna do a quick brush with my, my brush tip there. But see how it doesn't blend very good if you do that? So here's where I'm gonna pull in my bowl tip and this is how I'm gonna do my blending. So now I'm gonna kinda of go over the top of the where those colors are gonna overlap and kinda of blend that out. So that'll soften that line as we go. Hopefully this is making some sense. And as it dries, I think it looks even better as it dries. So we'll give that a moment to dry, but that should look Pretty darn good at this point. I'm happy with it anyway. All right, now I wanna add a little bit of the Clear Wing Estella. This is a little glitter brush. Love it, can't have too much Stella on your projects. And we're gonna go ahead and color in the white part of our stocking just to give it a little sparkle. Who doesn't love a little sparkle? I do, I love it. I hope you guys can see that, it's so pretty. I'll hold it up and see if I get it a little closer to the camera if you can see it. Okay, let's see. Hopefully that shows, it's so pretty, just with that little little bit of sparkle. Now, if you've got a Wink Stella and you're having trouble getting it to come out, um, I found that if I squeeze it, sometimes it oozes, so if you do that, Pull in your silicone craft sheet and do your squeezing over that because then if it blobs out, at least then you can pick up the product and apply it versus having it blob out on your project itself. I've made that mistake a few times. Sometimes you can salvage it, sometimes it's not so pretty. All right, so here's where we get to fussy cut. I am not a huge fan of fussy cutting, but sometimes an image needs to be fussy cut. And this one's a pretty easy one to do. I've got customers that are that love fussy cutting because it's very therapeutic, or it can be very therapeutic. So I am just trying to use the wider portion of my scissors. I find I personally do much better 
if I use the scissors down in this point versus the, the pointed edge, and then I'm trying to move my cardstock around instead of my scissors around, and I feel that I get a little bit more control when I do it this way. Of course, everybody's different, and you have to figure out what works best for you personally, but this works for me most of the time. All right, I'm pretty happy with that. I'm going with it. You forgot about bingo? Yes, there's a stamp set. So this is the stamp set, but it doesn't come with the bingo. You would have had to add it on. So Jean, I can double check and make sure, but I don't think you added the stamp set on. So you're good, you're good. But I can double check if you need me to. All right, our super cute stocking is all ready to set on the front here. So we're gonna add him, him. I don't know why it's a him. But we're gonna add that to the front with some dimensional dots. So let's go ahead and add some of those to the back. So perfect. So Jean, if by chance you did pick the option where you added the stamp set and you've already got it, we'll trade it out. We'll get you something else, no worries. Can always change that out, but it is not, it, it's not included. It's an add-on um, so that you guys could have the option. All right, cute, 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 cute. Let's go ahead and tie our ribbon now. I'm gonna go ahead and open this and see, I'm gonna slide this ribbon through the hole and through the other hole. I'm gonna try something a little different than what I did on the one, the first one I created. So when I first did this the first time, the first time, yes, I tied it with it closed like this. And so I found that when I opened it, it wasn't quite loose enough and so it doesn't open very flat. But I noticed when Vicki made hers, and I look at hers, hers opens up nice and flat, so she left this loose enough that it would do that. So here's what I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try tying the bow with it open like this and see if that makes a difference. This might be disastrous, but we're gonna try it and see what happens. So let's see if I can, I like to leave my ribbon on the spool. Um, I used about 10 inches, but I do better if I leave it on the spool. I feel like I save ribbon. So let's go ahead and just tie that, get that secured. And I'm gonna rotate this because I find my bows turn out better if I tie them upside down. Let's make my two loops, crisscross and go through the, the hole there. And then move my hand out of the way, let that fall. And then I'm gonna pull this tight. All right, I'm gonna hold that knot and pull these ends back in. The reason I hold the knot is because I don't want it to loosen up all the way, but I wanna be able to play with it to give it a nice, pretty bow. That looks good. I'm happy with that. So let's clip off these ends. Oh, almost. And let's see if that worked. Oh, that worked fabulously. Let's tighten that up just a smidge more. Oh, that worked out really, really well. Woohoo! like it. And then now it opens up opens up really flat. That's nice, I like that. Fun, okay. Now let's add some bling. Always need some bling, right? So I'm gonna add some of these wonderful gems. These are cool, they have flecks of glitter in them. Kind of a goldish glitter color in it. So I really like it. I've gone through lots and lots of these. You can see I have multiples in there. And let's bring in our take your pick and let's just add a few gems. So we'll add one up there. Let's go and add a bigger one down here. I guess I could have put the bigger ones up there, but I kind of like it down here. Cute, because I'm gonna put my candy in there and that's gonna cover up all that, that blank space we've got going on. All right, so I find that a, one of the flatter, um, with the height of this, with the half inch side, um, I tried to put like a mini Snickers bar and it would be need to be a, just a smidge taller to make that work easily. Um, so something flat like a Kit Kat or the Nestle Crunch bars. Um, oh, I guess they're not Nestle anymore. Do they say Nestle on them? Yeah, they still do. So um, I think that Nestle sold off all their candy division. Um, but anyway, who knows? So that slides right down in that pocket. Now, it will move around a little bit. So on this one, to keep it from moving, I just added a little glue dot behind it. And so when they take away the candy, it, it shouldn't tear it up too bad and they can be able to hopefully reuse this. But cute, right? I love it. 
and you can make them for any occasion. Cool? My, I think my favorite part about this is that while it looks excessive, it's I feel like the candy is coming right out of the stocking. Like it's just hanging on the mantle. <laughs> I know that's silly, but I like it. So, oh good, you liked it, yay, good, good, good. All right, I'd appreciate you guys if you love this, share it with your crafty friends, let them know to come join us on Tuesdays and we'll do some paper crafting together. All right, and don't forget, if you want to join me for bingo, I would love to have you. Registration ends on the 9th, which is coming up in just a few days. And we are going to play bingo on the afternoon, uh, Saturday afternoon, October 24th. And we're going to start at 2 p.m. Eastern time. So no matter where you live in the U.S., you can join us and have some bingo fun with us. Thanks for now. And we will see you guys soon. Talk to you next Tuesday. Have a great week. Bye.